What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another episode. I'm Swiper Cam, and welcome to my channel. Y'all, we have added over 500 subscribers since last Thursday. Let's see if we can add another 500 this week. Y'all, crazy. We are building this community like crazy. Share the video, like the video, comment below. Let me know what you're thinking, y'all. I just got done watching the Denver Nuggets playing against the Philadelphia 76ers on March 30th, 2021. And my first initial thoughts are, yo, that first unit might be, bar none, hands down, the best first unit in the entire NBA. Did you see that first quarter? Did you see how Jamal Murray came out? Did you see how Michael Porter Jr. came out? Did you see Jokic? Did you see the way Aaron Gordon was playing defense? Did you see the fast break dunks? The alley-oops? The three-pointers? The spacing? The switchability? So this is the thing that I've noticed off bat. Second game of Aaron Gordon being here. We switch everything now. The only person who doesn't switch on the first unit is Nikola Jokic. Everybody else is switching, though. Because now the help defense is outrageous. Because, again, now you got Will Barton at 6'5". You got Murray at 6'4". You got A.G. at 6'8". And then you got Michael Porter Jr. at 6'10". Now when everybody switches, yo, it's a, it's a field day. Now you doubling. It was crazy on defense. Y'all, the first quarter score, the Nuggets scored 44 points. We know that. Jokic with Duncan, Aaron Gordon, and one, and one three-pointers. MPJ was killing it. He was dunking. He was hitting threes, all kind of stuff. But it was 44-22. to 22. The Denver Nuggets held the Philadelphia 76ers to 22 points in the first quarter while scoring a season-high 44 points. Y'all, they came out swinging, absolutely swinging. Like, the thing that's that's so interesting about where the Nuggets are right now is that they're just now getting Aaron Gordon integrated two games in into what they're doing. JaVale McGee ain't even sniffed the court yet. So we're having to figure out how to play together. AG is figuring out, like, what it means to play next to Jokic. Where does he need to be learning the plays? He's learning how to play with, with Murray and with MPJ and with Barton. But they came out. Like, they've been playing together for years and smoked them. Y'all, this ain't no little thing. The Philadelphia 76ers are 6-2 and two in their last eight without Joel Embiid. On top of that, the Sixers are the second-ranked defense in the NBA. And the Denver Nuggets came out and put 44 points on them in the first quarter because they had no, no, no answers for the first unit with the Denver Nuggets. Now... The game wasn't all glitz and glam. That second unit came in in the second quarter at the end of the first quarter, let go of the rope. That second unit came in at the end of the third quarter and majority of that fourth quarter and let go of the rope. So by the time the game ends, the Denver Nuggets only win 104 to 95, but they won by that smaller margin because the second unit just didn't have it. And Aaron Gordon, also, and he didn't play in the, in the fourth quarter. I'm hoping it's not an injury like a hamstring or a foot or something like that. I'm hoping he's good. But, yeah, man. It just didn't look good when the second unit came in the game. Uh, I, I think we need to continue to have this conversation. Y'all know I like Faku. I've talked about Faku on the channel all the time. But Faku is not hitting anything. Faku tonight was 0-5 on the three-point line. He has been less than 20%, I think, like the last 15 games. If Faku can't hit threes, it makes it impossible to play him. Now, I get why people like were upset. And again, my Argentinians, I'm not trying to make you upset. Y'all know I like Faku, but I'm trying to explain to you, as you get further into the season, as you get to play playoff basketball, if you have a player who is not only – now, somebody, again, somebody brought up Ben Simmons. Somebody said, well, Ben Simmons can't shoot. So why is that not a mark against Ben Simmons, but it is against Faku? I'm like, well, Ben Simmons is up for the defensive player of the year. He's six foot ten, hyper-athletic. He can get to the basket. He can basically get anywhere he wants on the court. But he can't do that tonight because obviously Aaron Gordon was playing good defense and you have Michael Porter Jr. and Jokic was playing good interior defense. But most for the most part, Aaron Gordon is going to give you 16, 7, and 7 every night. But Faku doesn't have the physical ability to do it. So if he's not hitting shots, then it becomes a real drag on the second unit. So everything was great with the first unit. 
But then when the second union in, it really let go of the rope. But, y'all, check these numbers out. Jamal Murray tonight, 38 minutes, 30 points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists. He was 12 of 24 from the field, 5 of 11 from the three-point line. You love seeing 11 three-point attempts. 1 of 1 from the free throw line with 3 steals. And he was tied for second on the night with a plus 18. No, he tied. He was second. He was second on the team with a plus 18 tonight. Great game. Michael Porter Jr. Almost brought my ski mask in. 36 minutes, 27 points, 12 rebounds, 4 assists, 3 assists last game, 4 assists this game. And then he was 11 of 16 from the field, 5 of 7 from the three-point line, 0 of 2 from the free throw line, 1 steal, 1 block, and he was a plus 11 tonight. Michael Porter Jr., man, just outrageous. The shots he was hitting, the pump fake, letting Tobias Harris fly by. Michael Porter Jr. in the corner. Y'all, yeah, man, again, I can just, I just, I know NBA teams are kicking themselves for overthinking it with MPJ. All right, he has a back injury, but maybe we can let him rehab for a year. Nobody was willing to give him a chance. 12 teams passed because they didn't want to give him a chance to sit and get healthy. Then Michael Porter Jr. sat for a year, learned the NBA for another year, got sparing, sparingly played, and then now, after going through a playoffs, the dude is just on fire. I heard this on the broadcast tonight. That Michael Porter Jr. in his last 11 games, and then tonight including, uh, it's going to be higher than this. In his last 11 games before tonight, he's averaging close to 21 points per game, 56% from the field, and then 52% from the three-point line. And that's only going to go up tonight. Michael Porter Jr. has... Zion Williamson level efficiency, but from the perimeter. Think about that. Michael Porter Jr. has Zion Williamson level efficiency from the perimeter at six foot ten. The dude is not just a marksman. It, it 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 doesn't fully encapsulate his game to say he's just a really talented shooter or really a uh, really talented offensive player. Like yeah, he is, but he has the potential to do so much more. He had a block today on Seth Curry. When Seth went, got by him, and Seth tried to come on the other side of the basket and try to get a layup, and MPJ swatted it because he's learning how to use his body. Now he does not have the strength yet. Um, he got he lost another ball today. He sometimes can panic, but Michael Porter Jr. is coming along so nicely. Really, really, really good game from Michael Porter Jr. Nikola Jokic, the MVP, thirty-four minutes, twenty-one points, ten rebounds, five assists, eight of fourteen from the field. 0-1 from the three-point line, 5-6 from the three-point three line. He has six turnovers. 5-6 or six from the free-throw line, rather. He has six turnovers tonight. Play, got pretty sloppy on some plays. And a plus eight. Again, man, I don't... It, it, when he came back in in the fourth quarter, I knew why, but I, I was hoping the second unit was going to be able to play well enough that he didn't have to come back in, but they just weren't. Uh, I think they are missing Monte Morris. That's very obvious that the second unit is missing Monte Morris. Will Barton didn't really take advantage of being on the second unit because, you know, when he was in there without Jamal Murray, it didn't really look that good. Uh, Jamal Murray was cooking with the second unit, though. Uh, but they became really reliant on him. Uh, Will Barton tonight had 33 minutes. He had four points, seven rebounds, and six assists. 0 of 7 from the field. 0 of 3 from the three-point line. 4 of 4 from the free throw line and a minus two. And then uh, not a great shooting game from him. Aaron Gordon tonight, 25 minutes, 6 points, 4 rebounds, 1 assist, 3 of 4 from the field. And Aaron Gordon tonight with a team high, plus 19. Once again, I'm not sure why he wasn't in in the fourth quarter. Again, I'm hoping that it's not an injury. I really am. I don't I don't think it was. Again, I can't speculate. I'm going to have to check Twitter. I uh, have to see what folks are saying. I mean, again, go follow Mike Singer, Denver Post. Uh, Harrison Wynn, DMVR, Ryan Blackburn uh, with the Denver Stiffs. Like, go follow them. You know, hear what they have to say. But, yeah, man. Yeah, he's still recovering from the ankle injury in Orlando. So, so Michael Malone, this is from Brandon Boat from DMVR. Aaron, Aaron is still recovering from the ankle injury he suffered in Orlando. He could have gone out there. They were just going so small. Probably shouldn't have gotten him back in. Okay. So, it was just being protective. He was just being protective 
of Aaron Gordon, which I appreciate because Aaron Gordon's going to have a beast of a matchup. Uh, man, the Clippers, we played the Clippers on Thursday. And the Clippers are currently in third place. And they either won again or are winning right now, I believe. And they're 34 and 16, and Denver Nuggets are 29 and 28. So they keep winning. If the Lakers lose, hopefully they will again. And then the Nuggets are going to take over that fourth spot, it looks like. Uh, but it really, we're really trying to chase the Clippers for that third seed, but they've just been on the street. They've won six in a row. And, man, they just beat the Bucks, which you thought the Bucks might be able to beat them, but they couldn't. Uh, and then tonight, the Clippers, they're still playing. Uh, they're playing against the Orlando Dramatic, and they're up four. And I am not confident that the Orlando Dramatic will pull through. So the Denver Nuggets need to continue to win. And we need Aaron Gordon for that game more than anything else. So I'm glad that Mike Malone made that decision. Really, we we didn't need and should have needed the starters to close out the game tonight. But, uh, again, the second unit just did not look great. Uh, that killer mentality is still not there. But, y'all, the big three tonight, the big three they accounted for, what is that? So they accounted for 48, 78 points tonight. They accounted for 28 rebounds. And then they also, the big three also accounted for 13 assists. 78 points. 78 points. Wow. 28 rebounds. Wow. Wow. 13 assists. Whew. That's dirty, man. And again, Aaron Gordon, man, he just looks really good. He changes the dynamic of this team. Having Aaron Gordon slotting in between MPJ and slotting in between MPJ and Jokic, it changes the dynamic. Now the Nuggets are switching everything. And MPJ is learning on defense how to play better. He can't guard everybody yet. But he even, Tobias Harris took him to the post tonight. Again, MPJ is still not like all the way there, doesn't have his man body all the way yet. Tobias Harris is 28, MPJ is 22. Tobias hit a couple shots over. But honestly, man, if your best shot down 20, down 25, the Nuggets were 25 twice in this game. If your best shot is putting Tobias Harris on a low block on MPJ and that's what your hope is for your offense, hey, man, do what you do because I am not concerned. Number one, that takes forever. That's the first thing. And then number two, okay, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to go score? Are you going to go outscore MPJ? And I said this on Twitter. Somebody asked, you know, because I was saying, like, I would take MPJ over Tobias Harris. And again, not even just future, but right now. People are like, well, and I think Tobias Harris has been the second most valuable player on the 76ers this year, considering all that he does to that for that team. And I said, I want MPJ right now because MPJ, not only is he getting better, MPJ not only has top 10 potential, but MPJ is a lights out shooter who is just figuring the game out, who has been excellent, excellent since he's been back from COVID. He's been excellent this year. He's a six foot ten marksman who is learning how to get to the basket. He had another one guy got to the basket again today and distributed. Y'all, 27, 12, and 4. That's all NBA numbers. That if Jokic put up 27, 12, and 4, that wouldn't be one of his better games. But that would be somebody that's vying for the MVP candidacy. We would love those numbers. MPJ put up 27, 12, and 4 on 11 of 16 and 5 of 7. So this team does a lot of good things right now. Uh, P.J. Dozier did not have a good night. Two, three, and two. One of six, one of three. One block, one steal, minus four. Paul Millsap was pretty good tonight. Paul Millsap was pretty good. Ten points, one rebounds, three of four. One of one, three of three. He had two blocks and a steal. He was a plus seven on the night. Michael Green, three points, six rebounds, three assists, one of one. Uh, one of four from free throw, one of one from the field. He had three steals. And he was a plus one. So, JaVale McGee still hasn't played. Uh, Gary Clark, I believe he came in yesterday or today. He still hasn't played. So, the Denver Nuggets have a lot of growth that they have still to go with their new unit. But, man, 44 points in the first quarter against the second-rated defense in the league and only holding them to 22 points. Uh, right now, their offensive rating is going to be outrageous with those four in the court with Murray, Jokic, Porter, Gordon. That offensive rating can be outrageous, but then the defensive rating, which is most important, really, that's going to be outrageous. Because we already know they can score, but defensively, they're so long and they're so big. And again, for all these people out there that don't think Jokic is playing defense, even though he's like number two in the NBA in total steals, which is nothing to slouch at. Because there's no way to do that unless you're a good, hearty, smart, intelligent defender. 
But the fact that you have 6'8", 6'10", 7 feet, and 6'4", and then now 6'5", with Barton, it changes the complexion of the team. So, yeah, you can play good defense when you have athletes that are screaming everywhere. And Jokic is a good interior defender. So, again, good win for the Denver Nuggets. They're coming back Thursday, April 1st, play against the Clippers. And, man, if the Clippers lose tonight, which they probably won't, but it's going to be a really good game. Really excited about that. They play in L.A. Let's go. Or, yeah, they play in L.A. So let's do this, man. Let's go. Y'all, this is Swipe a Cam. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Share the video. We will be back on Thursday for the Clipper game. Yo, Denver Nuggets taking off. I'll see you soon, Swipe a Gang.